Hey guys, this is James from Isotropic, and in this video I just want to quickly run through how we advise our clients to create blog posts with an Elementor site. So, off the bat, I recommend not using Elementor to build out blog posts, even if there are complex layouts that include columns, tables, multiple images, galleries, stuff like that. And the reason I recommend doing this, and using Gutenberg to do this instead of Elementor, even though Elementor is a structural builder, is because Elementor adds a lot of weight to the page. So continuously adding more Elementor elements to a blog post will make it load slower, uh, worse user experience. And the same thing can be done with Gutenberg. That's the first reason. And the second reason is, in the future, Elementor is a great builder now, but in the future, it might not be the top of the pack. There might be a better option out there. For example, our agency uses Oxygen Builder for most of our websites now whereas we used to use Elementor for most of our websites in the past. If you build out your blog post with Elementor, there is no possible way in the future for you to easily migrate from Elementor to a new page builder, a new theme, a new content management system, because everything is encoded as a shortcode specifically for Elementor to read and then display to the visitor in its pretty formatting. So you're really limiting your future options if you build out hundreds of blog posts on Elementor and either in the future you'll be stuck with Elementor or you'll have to pay somebody to move away if you want to move away. So let me show you a couple things here just really quickly. So here's Gutenberg, very simple, easy to use, title and your blocks. So more, m most people write out their blog posts, they have multiple paragraphs and uh, from those paragraphs they create and maybe add an image or add a couple things. You can see Amelia's uh, booking plugins installed here. We're not doing that. And you can see there are a bunch of different blocks. In these blocks, there are a couple things that you may not know about and may be very helpful to you. So first, you can easily add a gallery. You can easily add media and text. So text next to an image, video, files, audio, a lot of things here replace many blocks in Elementor. And obviously, if you're building a page or a full site or a header or a footer, you can't use Gutenberg. But if you're doing a simple blog post, could be very easy just to use Gutenberg. Here's where a lot of people don't know about this, but this is where things get interesting. So columns, you can build out complete column layouts in Gutenberg, just add the column block. And there you go. And now you can add, say, I want to add a paragraph here. And I want to add a gallery here. So you can easily search through your blocks and add your add your gallery. I don't know if we have any images here. But uh, we'll go on Unsplash and download two images just to so show you what the automatic gallery looks like. So Unsplash, free images. If you don't know about it, it's very helpful to web designers. But you have your you have your gallery and you can add and, and edit different images and make different structures and really build out anything you want in Elementor. So uh, to compare, let's go to another post and just load up the, the Elementor builder and show you that there's a lot of overlap between the blocks on Gutenberg and the blocks on Elementor, if Elementor loads. This is a very slow interface. As Elementor loads, let me go back here and just show you a couple other things. So you can add HTML blocks. And whenever I embed links, I really like using something from iFramely. So here's a link to my agency. And you just copy and paste the code in here. And bam, there's your HTML code showing on the front end. Very uh, well done, well designed. And let's see. We can copy this placeholder text and throw it in uh, Gutenberg. And uh, let's check our, our media library. We can add multiple images into a gallery. And this gallery is in only one side of the page. And finally, let's take a look at this on the front end. And you'll see that here's a, and this is a hello theme and no, nothing, nothing special, but you'll see your main paragraph. Here's a column, here's a, here's a gallery, and here's a link. So you can really replace everything in Elementor, you can add your columns and your gallery and your link and that shows up exactly as it would show up in Gutenberg.
but you can replace everything in Elementor with Gutenberg, and the reason to do that again is that it's faster and it future-proofs your site. Everything will work with Gutenberg because this is a native feature of WordPress ever since uh, version 5. So you'll, you'll, you won't be stuck on Elementor. One other thing before I leave you is I want to show you a couple additional things. So if you look up Gutenberg, you will find many free plugins that are very similar to uh, Elementor add-on plugins in that they add additional functionality to Gutenberg. You'll find a ton of different block packs, which are essentially, uh, if you're purchasing an add-on kit for Elementor, it's essentially like an Elementor uh, widget pack. And we like using Gutenberg blocks because they add a bunch of additional, pretty well-designed and functional utilities to Gutenberg. And you'll see there are a ton of additional things here. And I don't know if there's a, a, a pro version, but the this version works very well. So I'll just show you to end this video, uh, this pack that we, that we use on our sites and we have our clients use. All right, so we're back here. If we just go to our block library, you can get there or, or go from here. I'll show you the additional blocks that we have. And keep in mind, all of these are built into WordPress immediately. But here, advanced heading, post grid, you can display uh, posts. You can have a post carousel section just as you have in Elementor, buttons, team members, post timelines, block quotes, how-to schema, uh, an inline notice. I mean, and everything's really well built and designed. And uh, it is really, it, it makes Elementor much more advanced, uh, Gutenberg much more advanced. So a bunch of different things here, a bunch of add-on packs for, for Gutenberg. The reason, again, we want to use Gutenberg instead of Elementor is that you're not locked into Elementor in the future. You may really love the tool now, but there might be better offerings out there in the future that are cheaper, that are easier to use, that don't have a bunch of bugs all the time. Uh, and then uh, it's, it's also just quicker on the front end and because this is a local site I can't really show you the speed test but uh, Elementor sites that use Gutenberg to do their posts are a lot quicker than Elementor sites that use Elementor to do their posts simply because you're already loading Gutenberg and if you do Elementor you're just adding additional elements onto the page and it might not impact it crazy especially if it's a small post but if it's a big post uh, it adds up and it's just slower and a slower site ranks lower and visitors don't like it as much so hopefully this seven minute video showed you kind of why we recommend this to our clients while i will recommend this to anybody who asks me if they should use gutenberg elementor or anything to to build out blog posts but uh those are the benefits in my opinion